Hayden. My name is Jaden. My name is Eli. I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel. We are so glad you could be joining us, learning the Torah with us. Spit it out, son. <laughs> I'm still learning my words here. <laughs> That's uh, okay. Yeah, well, thank, you, thank you for joining us, learning the Torah with us. We are learning as well, and we are, uh, hope you enjoy this. Yeah, I hope you enjoy this. We are, um, we are going to lay down two versions of this today right here because it looks like we're having another issue in this house. It looks like our, our cow is about to die. She can no longer get up by herself, and so it's going to be a cling sweep here shortly enough. But it's one of our more of our new favorite cows. Not even new, but it, she's been around for a while. And um, it's just a tragedy. And so we are probably going to lay down two of these right now so that we can get them for the next days because we're probably not going to feel very inclined to say much or really be spunky at all. And so we're trying to be as spunky as we can with the issues that we're having right now. So um, spunky-fied, you guys understand the... Uh, you guys understand what life is about, right? Yeah. You understand what death is about? Yep. On a farm, it comes and it goes, and um, it's been, since 2022, we've just lost a tremendous amount of cows, and, uh, you know, I guess, I guess, you know, I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't know why they're dying or how they're dying, if it's the hand of Hasatan. It does seem like every time that we get more active in the Torah and we push more, that they kill more of our stuff, or they... They completely afflict this family to a point where they get our minds, hearts, and souls away from Yah so that we are unable to deliver the message. And so we, we try to power through this stuff regardless of how we feel. Um, I'm on day four of coffee detox. And like I said before, if you don't think coffee is a drug, you should absolutely try to stop drinking coffee. And you can see how much of a drug it actually is because your body is completely dependent upon this stuff. And uh, I guess I was a glutton for coffee. And... I will never, ever drink coffee again after detoxing as hard as I have. So this is day four. Um, my head is still kind of splitting. It's not nothing like day two. Day one was good. Day two, real bad. Yesterday was, was just moderate. It was all day, kind of just a headache, and it's kind of a destabilizing headache. So we will try to make this through this the best we can, and all glory to our Creator in life and in death. Uh, Yah provides, Yah, Yah gives, and Yah takes away. Blessed be the name of our Creator. All right, so let's get right into this and um, roll through this. And let's see. Let's do our little hokey dokey thing here. And that goes. And we are right here, folks. So we are in Exodus 34. Uh, anyone want to give us a quick, where are we at? What are we doing? What's happening with Moshe? Where? What? What's what's going on? So after uh, Moses, Moshe uh, took the Yashalites out of Egypt. They went to the mount. They went to basically have a reunion with Yah, a kind of a marriage ceremony. And Yah came down on the mountain like a thunder clouds, and you heard ram's horns blowing, and it freaked the people out. It really scared them. So they said, Moses, you talk to the, you talk to Yah. We're too scared to this. We'll die. And so he went up there, and he was gone basically for forty days and forty nights. And when he was getting all the commands, all the instructions for the tabernacle, for the for the everything. Uh, the Yashalites decided they were going to make a golden calf because they didn't understand, they didn't know, they still had their paganism built into them, so they made a calf of gold. Yeah, and, and so it didn't up. take them long. They, they yeah. said, they told Moshe that they would do everything that Yah told them to do, and they said, just, we don't want to talk to him, you talk to him, and then he goes up for 40 days, and then these guys are immediately uh, taking all their pagan earrings and everything off and sticking them into a calf. Uh, Aaron, the, uh, you know, he... he he did the beta male thing, and he was unable to stand up to them, but they probably would have killed him. Uh, maybe, maybe not. We don't know, because he never tried. So, anyway, here we are. Let's begin. Exodus 34. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Hew you two sapphire stones like unto the first, and I will write upon these sapphires the words that were in the first sapphires which you broke. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present yourself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with you, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mount. And he hewed two sapphire stones like unto the first, and Moshe rose up early in the morning, and went up unto Mount Sinai, as Yahuwah had commanded him, and took in his hand the two sapphire stones. And Yahuwah descended in the cloud, and stood with him, and proclaimed the name of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah passed by before him, and proclaimed, Yahuwah, Yahuwah. El merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, 
and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and the fourth generation. Let's let's pause on that. What what does that mean right there? That means he is going to basically generational curses. Yeah. Yeah, that's like the your great grandfather was uh, into some sort of sin. Freemason. Yeah, some sort of cra- Freemason scumbag. And he did some crazy thing like that. Then uh, you kind of get a generational curse, and you basically have to try and break that. You have to try and break that curse through prayer, through fasting. There's a, it's a wild thing when uh, generational curses because your parents, your, dogs. your parents could be into uh, some crazy thing. Your great grandparents could be into something that could pass off to you, and you can end up with that generational curse. How how what do they need to do, to cr- put a curse on you? They basically what would break they, the what, Torah. Yeah, break the Torah, Not, and if they didn't care about Yah's Torah, right? If they if they just don't care about it, it will end up cursing you. And so there are generational curses and, and a lot of those things. I mean, some of the generational curses are drug abuse, right? Alcoholism, um, uh, child uh, beating, right? When you beat your child or something of the sort, right? A lot of these things come as a generational curse and they come as a generational curse because if we were in the Torah, we wouldn't be beating our children. We wouldn't be alcoholics. We wouldn't be drug addicts. We wouldn't be any of that stuff. Um, and so we can, by not keeping the Torah, we can certainly fall under generational curses and they're not just you being cursed, but it is the curse of the actions of what others have done. And, um, yeah, I mean, if you're beat as a child, there's a good chance that you will grow up and you will beat your children as well. And that, that is definitely a generational curse. All right. Verse eight. And Moshe made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worship. And he said, if now I have found grace in your sight, O Adonai, let my Adonai I pray you go among us for it is a stiff necked people and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for your inheritance. And he said, behold, I cut a covenant before all your people. I will do wonders such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation and all the people among which are, which you are, shall see the work of Yahuwah. That didn't even sound right. And all the people among which you are shall see the work of Yahuwah. Whom you are shall see, yeah, whom you are shall see the work of Yahuwah. That's what it says in mine as well. All right. For it is a terrible thing that I will do with you. Guard that guard which that which I command you this day. Behold, I drive out before you the Emory and the Kenania, Kenania and the Chitium and the Perizium and the Chivi and the Yevisi. And up at the top, we have Amorites, Canaanites, Hittites, Pez, Pezerites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Take heed to yourself, lest you cut a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither you go, lest it be a snare for a snare in the midst of you. What does it mean to cut a covenant with the inhabitants? How would you cut a covenant? You basically let them live on the land. Like, okay, we're, we're neighbors. We're living on the land now. You basically just let them do what they the want land. to yeah. do and bring in their, their evil stuff. Right. But you shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their Asheroth poles. For you shall worship no other El. For Yahuwah Kanna is my name. He is a jealous El. What does it say in your guys' Yahuwah's name is jealous. Yahuwah's name is jealous. Okay. Lest you cut a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their Elohim, and do sacrifice unto their Elohim. And one call you, and you eat of his sacrifice. So that just explained it, what it is right there. Um, so you cut a covenant with them and they, they, they go and they put a sacrifice to their false gods and then you eat of that sacrifice. So eating a, a God's sacrificed meal is, is... It was like the priest we had for the Israelites when they would kill them and they'd have the altar, the slaughtering and everything and they would eat what's left, right? They would eat what's cooked with their bread and stuff. It's basically the same thing except they're forced doing it to other gods. Right. And take of their daughters unto your sons... And their daughters go whoring after their Elohim, and make your sons go whoring after their Elohim. And you shall make no molten Elohai. So what does that mean, no molten Elohai? Mine says molded, so basically no, you know, like, don't statues. Don't your, don't is a cross around your neck a molten Elohai? It could it be, yeah. Well could be. There's a lot, lot of people worship the cross. A lot of people will actually worship the cross, and they, they use it. It's, I mean, you can basically turn any uh, physical any, idol. Anything, supposed to have any anything made images. of man's hands is going to be uh, considered an idol, right? Anything that is like considered of a holy thing to be uh, done by man's hands is not a thing of y'all. So if you go to the garage sale and you pick up this little cool thing, it's a Buddha image from like somewhere, China or something, 
is that right or is that wrong? That's, that's wrong. definitely wrong. That's, we know that's definitely a false mighty one. Right. And so, uh, what are what are some other false mighty ones that, that they they have? Uh, Mother Mary. Yeah, the Mother Statue Mary. of Liberty, believe it or not, is a conservative idol. I got into a debate yesterday, and uh, I did a, a, a news article on 153news.net, which kids do not go there. This is for parents only. Um, but I did one, and I was talking about, I was exposed to the Catholic religion and were, and praying to, to Mother Mary. And um, a guy came back, and he, he was talking to me about it. He goes, hey, it's just our culture, right? It's the Catholic is more of a culture than it is a religion, and Mother Mary is a divine he said divine thing, and I'm like, well, it doesn't say anywhere. I'm sure she was a wonderful woman, and I'm not knocking the mother of our Messiah um, or the chosen woman that was there to bring our Messiah out there, but she is not to be worshipped, and you definitely don't pray. And they, they say, well, we pray, and you know, I went to Catholic.com, and it said the reason that we pray to Mother Mary is the same reason you would ask somebody else to go pray for you. And I'm like, that is absolutely not the same thing. That is not. Because you're supposed to be praying. How do you pray, Eli? Uh, our Father who art in heaven. Who do you pray to? Yahuwah. Yeah, the only pray to, there's only one El who we pray to. We do not pray to Messiah Yahushua. We do not pray to Mother Mary. We don't pray to Paul or whatever they do. I know the, the Catholics, they'll pray to everybody. Yeah, they, they have a bunch Peter's of statues of like, all the who? apostles. Peter? Yeah, Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah St. Well. Peter. They love St. Peter. So, and and their, their, their thing is that Basically, they say that she, Mother Mary, is is reigning in the Shemaim with Messiah Yahushua. And so when we are able to pray to her, she's a divine intercessor for us. And she will take it to her son. And that, that's completely unbiblical. That's, that's completely wrong. Uh, 18. The feast of matzah shall you guard. Uh, it sounds like a command here. Seven days you shall eat matzah as I commanded you in the time of the month of Aviv. For in the month of Aviv, you came out of Mitzrayim. And there's no month of Aviv. Um, this is the first month, and they do not have names. So somehow they ended up with a pagan names in these Bibles. Um, there is no such thing. So I, I don't know where that even came from. But it's first month, right? So in the in the month of first month, for it is the first month you came out of Mitzrayim. Okay. All that opens the womb is mine. In every firstling among your cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is male. But the firstling of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. And if you redeem him not, then shall you break his neck. All the firstborn of your sons you shall redeem. And none shall appear before me empty. Six days you shall work. But on the seventh day you shall rest. In earing time and in harvest you shall rest. What does it say in earing time? Plowing. Plowing, plowing time. Okay. So in plowing time you <laughs> shall rest. Okay, so we have a couple commands. I mean, we need to add this to it's our... It's like subcommands. I think we've been over most yeah, of these. Yeah, subcommand. So, Eli, you're, we need to... 18, verse 18 is the Feast of Matzah, right? It's reiterating... Uh, 17 is also the Don't Make Mighty Ones. Uh, yeah, 17, you shall... Okay, so yeah, so 17, you shall make no molten L.O. high. Um, and maybe up here, unless you cut it... We have another one yeah, break, the covenant break down the pillars. Uh, but you shall destroy their altars, break their images, cut down their Ashroth poles. That would be in the land. I mean, you would you would get thrown in jail. Yeah, unfortunately, you really can't do anything anywhere else if you started like Cause going around, all satanic, uh, start yeah. stoning people for worshiping other gods. You just you well, end cut, up with or, or like in the United States, they have that giant idol of uh, Satan. Remember the Satan's yeah, yeah, idol yeah, that's in Baphomet. Michigan, the Baphomet, and uh, they took down the Ten Commandments for that. Yeah. yeah, and they yeah they took down the Ten Commandments and they added up uh, the devil and stuff like that. So definitely should be broken down. Yeah, and they you, but if you break that down, you'd end up in jail. You'd end up on the news. Yeah, you'd you'd end up on the news <laughs> for sure. <laughs> okay, so we have a couple commandments. I feel like. Like we're missing something here. Um, this is in the land. We should not cut covenants with them. Um, you shall worship, for you shall worship no other L, for Yahuwah Kana is my name. So there's one. 14 is one. Eli? Mm -hmm. Okay, you with me? Yep. You, you on in there about to pass out cold, Eli? Um, let's see. Unless you cut a covenant with them, take your daughters into your sons. Okay. You shall na make no, so there's two in here. You shall make no molten Elohai. There's two sub-commands. Three is the feast of matzah shall you guard. Seven days shall you eat matzah as I commanded you in the month of the first month. Okay, so there's three. Um, all that opens the womb is mine. And every firstling among your cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is male. Um, I, I, I think that's a command, but I mean. How, I would, you, how would you give it to Yahoo? I think you should I give it to the priest. The one, like the firstborn. Right. Is sanctified. 
And uh, I just don't want to miss any commands. I just feel like we're missing something here. But the firstling of a donkey, you shall dream with the lamb. And if you not, if you redeem him not, then shall you break his neck. All the firstborn of your sons you shall redeem, and none shall appear before me. This sounds crazy, right? So, I mean, I don't, I don't want to. This is Yah stuff. I'm not saying Yah stuff is crazy, but it sounds crazy, right? You got to break the neck of a donkey, right? Dude, how would you even do that? Fast, fast and furious. It'd be a snapper, l snapper. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah it's so, more like a, if you don't want to. Basically, give the Ahua what he gave you. He's gonna take it away. Basically, you can't have it either. Yeah, and so I don't think I don't think that's a command for, for today. But I mean, I think the firstborn are sanctified to Yah, like he says. Okay, and then we have twenty one, which six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. So that's a sub command as well. So there's a bunch of commands in here. We cannot miss this. Um, and you shall observe the feast of Katzer. What is that? In your feast of weeks of harvest. Feast of harvest, right? Of the first first fruits fruits. of the wheat harvest and the feast of Asif. In gathering? In gathering uh, at the year's end. So I think this is something that we should do, right? We should observe these two feasts, right? Right. And so there's five commands, five subcommands in this. It says, Thrice in the year shall all your men, children, appear before Yahu Adonai, the Elohai of Yashrael. That's another sub. Well, that's just reiterating. Thrice in the year, three times in the year. Uh, you are supposed to appear before the sovereign Lord. So this is where you would spo- you're supposed to go to Jerusalem. This is where you are. Every male is supposed to go to to Jerusalem, and I don't even know we do this right now. It's in it's a God forsaken land. I, I don't right think now. we're gonna find no Levites over there. No, there's no Levi. There's nobody over there. It's just a whole bunch of uh, outcasts that have like uh, said they're the God's people and they're not because they're not keeping the law, statutes, and commands. All right. Um, so I guess that is not a, I mean, it is a command. It is a command. Three times a year, all your, should, should appear before Adonai Yahuwah, the Elohai of Yashrael. Um, but thoughts, it's not anyone? like, it's not telling puzzle for us to go to Jerusalem, we right? We have one though that says keep the feast. So maybe that could just be under. All right. So Nicole, I'll need your help with Eli to get these in. Cause at this point there's a lot here. For I will cast out the nations before you and enlarge your borders. Neither shall any man desire your land when you shall go up to appear before Yahuwah Eloheka thrice in a year. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. Neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Pesach be left until morning. Um, so these, there's a ton of subcommands here. The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring unto the house of Yahuwah Eloheka. You shall not see a kid in his mother's milk. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Write these words, for after the tenor of these words, I have cut a covenant with you and with Yisrael. And he was there with Yahuwah forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the sapphires the words of the covenant, the ten devarim. And it came to pass, when Moshe came down from Mount Sinai with, with the two sapphires of the testimony in Moshe's hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moshe knew not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. And when Aaron and all the children of Yashrael saw Moshe, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh nigh him. And Moshe called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the assembly returned unto him, and Moshe talked with them. This is probably after they all bolted for their lives. So wait, come back. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. come here, come here. It's all right. right. I got some cool tablets. Yeah, I got some stuff here. So, and afterward, all the children of Yashrael came nigh, and he gave them in commandment. All that Yahuwah had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And there was our one that we just posted for today. So hopefully you guys have a good reading. Um, okay. And until Moshe had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moshe went in before Yahuwah to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spoken to the children of Yashrael, which he commanded, which he was commanded. And the children of Yashrael saw the face of Moshe, that the skin of Moshe's face shone, and Moshe put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. Okay, so there's a ton of commandments, ton of subcommandments, nothing new in this, but there's a ton. It's basically reiterating a, a ton of these in there. Um, and I don't know if I would say they're subcommandments. I would just say that they're verses. They're verses that reiterate the commandments, the right? Yes. So Nicole has a good point. They are not subcommandments. They are just more. Um, I don't understand. Yeah, they're not. They're, they're, yeah, she's right. They're not sub commandments. They are just uh, reiterating with verses the actual commandments, which is what we want to do. Is we want to gather everything together so we have a complete, um, complete uh, score of everything. All right, gentlemen. I think that is it. Um, 
let's wrap this one up. Does anyone have anything else out there? Um, read your Bibles. Um, we will see you guys soon. Um, we will have a sermon, a live sermon this, this yep. Thursday. Don't forget to tune in, guys, if you will, for the Youth for Yah. It is on Thursdays. There's also a Telegram group um, for youth, but anybody can be in it. It's not tremendously active, but there's a few of us in there. And um, if it's for any kind of questions that you guys have or any kind of uh, support that you may need, things of that nature, um, it is, is a place for the youth and, you know, pretty much for anybody. So I think that's it. Um, any prayer requests? Any prayer requests, please let us know in the comments below. Um, if you can let us know maybe possibly a direction that you would like us to pray. A lot of people just say, please pray for me. And we would just pray for people and we have absolutely no direction what to do. So um, I think it would be a better to be targeted prayers um, with whatever the, the crises is that you're facing. And for all of our family out there, we thank you guys very, very much for spending this time um, with us and for hanging out with us, for being our digital family, being our extended family. And I will have to say that you guys are more of a family than we actually have family outside of my house here. So um, you guys have become very close to a lot of us and we appreciate your comments. We appreciate your kindness. We appreciate your love. And, um, you know, I, I know Yah is, the angels are rejoicing every time that there is a, a new person that comes to Yah that, that is able to um, seek him and and where he is able to be found I know the angels are rejoicing and I know he's he's bringing his people together right it's it's little bits at a time it's one one seat at a time and one people at a time and at some point there'll be 144,000 of you and uh, y'all will have his number and then I guess that's when the world will get a little crazier than it already is all right so with that much love to everybody right, out shalom, there shalom shalom, shalom. we're out